Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In this course module, we will continue our discussion on operations on vectors. We will talk about distance, angle, and standard deviation. Distance between two vectors, angle between two vectors, and standard deviation of a vector. So you can uh, review more material in chapter three of the reference one. Let's start with distance. As the name suggests, so we are we are interested in finding the distance between two vectors in Euclidean space. Say we take two vectors a, b in R n. So we are interested in finding out the distance from vector a to b or distance from vector b to a. So we use this notation to denote distance. The distance between vector a and b is given by norm of a vector a minus b. A minus B is a vector that points from vector B to A. Similarly, B minus A is a vector that points from uh, A to B. So we can say distance AB uh, as the distance between the vector A and vector B. So what is the interpretation of this distance? Why do we compute distance? So, so we compute distance to compare two vectors or to find out whether vectors are close to each other or far from each other. If uh, the distance between point A and point B uh, is small, we say vectors are close to each other. And if this distance uh, is large, the vectors are far from each other. So let me illustrate this with one example as well. So we take one example and we take three vectors. Say, so we take the vector A and we take vector B. And we also take another vector, say a vector C. And we're interested in finding out the distance from A to B, B to C, and C to A. Right. The distance from A to B uh, will be given by A minus B Euclidean norm, and that would be 8.368. And the distance from A to C would be given by A minus C, which is 0.387. And the distance from B to C would be given by B minus C Euclidean norm, 8.533. So based on these distances, we can say A is closer to C uh, than it is uh, to B. How do we use this distance operation in applications? To demonstrate this, uh, let me quickly review two application examples in which uh, we use this distance operation. Say we have a problem in which we want to determine similarity between two objects. Uh, for example, we have a classification problem in which we have two objects and we have vector uh, that represents feature of each object. Say, and we want to find out the similarity between objects. Say if we have two vectors, A and B, that belongs to Rn, the distance AB or A minus B norm, so this quantity quantifies the similarity between two objects. If this quantity is small, we say uh, the objects are close to each other or the similar to each other. And if this distance is large, and uh, the objects are different from each other. Another application could be a prediction error in prediction applications. So for example, uh, so we carry out prediction of um, sales. We want to carry out prediction of uh, rainfall uh, and so on and so forth. So. So in prediction, we always want to predict some quantity. Say the value we want to predict is given by a vector y. And this is a true value. And, and what you predict is, is y hat. So the difference between y and y hat is in fact error. Right? But to, uh, we want to quantify the error. So y minus y hat would be a vector. To convert into a scalar, we just take a norm of that. Right, so we can say y minus y hat Euclidean norm is in fact, we label it as error, norm of the error. So this is one more example in which uh, we use distance to quantify the error between the true value and predicted value. Distance can be used to compare two vectors. Another operation on vectors that can be used to compare two vectors is the angle between two vectors. Say we take two vectors a, b in Rn and we want to find out the distance between 
so sorry the angle between vectors a and b so the angle between vectors a and b is given by cosine inverse of a transpose b which is the inner product divided by norm of a and norm of b or we can say this quantity here is the normalized inner product in which we normalize by the norm of a and norm of b and you take cosine inverse of this quantity and we know that uh, the minimum angle between any two vectors can be zero degree and the maximum angle can be 180 degree if they're anti-aligned so we can say the, the angle between a and b always between zero and pi pi is 180 degree and depending on the value of this theta so we assign different names uh, to the vector a and b so we say the vectors are aligned as the name suggests when theta is equal to zero degree or the vectors appear something like this so the vectors are aligned so the red is a and blue is b so we say the vectors are anti-aligned so the maximum angle when theta is 180 degree or pi or the vectors are anti-aligned let's say something like this okay. and we say the vectors are orthogonal if the angle between a and b is 90 degree or a and b are perpendicular to each other and this is uh, a and b are perpendicular to each other as we are reviewing angle here i can also talk about uh, cauchy schwarz inequality so let me move these vectors here a bit so this definition of angle i can also write it as cosine of theta is equal to a transpose b divided by norm of a norm of b or we can say norm of a times norm of b times cosine of theta is equal to a transpose b and what we know uh, that the magnitude of cosine of theta would be always between 0 and 1 or from here we can say that norm of a times norm of b so this quantity would be always greater than or equal to a transpose b magnitude and this is in fact uh, of one form of Cauchy Schwarz inequality so using uh, these angles uh, we can also define one more operation on vectors and that is a correlation coefficient say we take again take two vectors a b belongs to r n and uh, to define correlation coefficient we first define say we first subtract the average value of a from a and subtract average value of b from b and so we define new vectors a tilde and b tilde as so a tilde is equal to a minus average of a and b tilde is b minus average value of b in fact uh, they have special name they're called d mean because we have removed the mean value or the average value uh, of the vector uh, from the vector these are d mean vectors so for these d mean vectors so we define the correlation coefficient for vector a and b so the correlation coefficient is denoted by the symbol rho and that is given by a simply normalized inner product between these d mean vectors or we can simply say this is nothing but cosine of angle between a tilde and b tilde because this is the angle between a tilde and b tilde which is in fact cosine inverse of um, this normalized inner product when you take cosine of this what you get is uh, correlation coefficient and from here we can also say that the correlation coefficient would be always between 
minus 1 and in 1. So what is the interpretation of correlation coefficient? So correlation coefficient informs us that we have, if the vector A contains one quantity and vector B contains another quantity. So if the quantities vary together, so that is informed by the value of correlation coefficient. For example, we take uh, these two values. Say we have this vector A and we have this vector B. And we can say that as A is increasing, B is also increasing, and when A is decreasing, B is also decreasing. And when we and draw a scatter plot of A and B, so what we get is, is this. So for this case, the value of correlation coefficient between A and B would be would be close to one. Take another example in which, so when A is decreasing, uh, B is increasing. So and when we draw a scatter plot, we get something like this. So for this case, the value of correlation coefficient would be minus one and if we take another example in which there is uh, no relationship between the variation in a and variation in b so we can say that for this case the value of correlation coefficient would be equal to zero since the correlation coefficient describes how the two quantities vary together the correlation coefficient would be equal to one when the vectors are aligned or they vary together the, the, the value of coefficient would be equal to minus 1 when they are empty aligned and the value of correlation coefficient would be 0 when they are orthogonal to each other. So we have talked about uh, a distance uh, that can be used to compare two vectors. Uh, we can use angle to compare two vectors and using angle we, can all, we have also defined the correlation coefficient that can be used to compare vectors as well. So let's talk about one more operation on vectors that is standard deviation. In fact, standard deviation is defined for only one vector. Say we have a vector x uh, that belongs to Rn and for this vector x we define standard deviation as, um, so you take the first component x1, you subtract the average value of the x, you take square and so on and so forth you do for each component you sum all the components you take mean value uh, and you take a square root so this is standard deviation what is the interpretation of this standard deviation of a vector so if you see this quantity x1 minus average of x so this describes the variation of the component of the entry x1 around the mean value of the vector similarly the second quantity x2 minus average of x this describes the variation of x2 around average value of x and we are summing all of these variations so we can say standard deviation quantifies a typical amount by which entries of the vector vary around the average value so let me rewrite this so we can say standard deviation can be interpreted as a typical amount By which entries of a vector deviate around mean value, around average value, because so we are summing all, all of these variations. So x one x one minus average of x. So this quantity is a variation of x one around mean value, and this is the variation of nth component around average value. So around average value. So we can also define, we can also interpret in, in, in another way, say by defining a vector y, which is given by x minus say average of x times 1. So y is d mean version of x. So we have subtracted mean of the x from x. <coughs> to obtain y so and if we use the definition of uh, standard deviation of x so we can say so using y we can write standard deviation of x as 
y1 square plus y2 square plus yn square divided by n and if you if you recall so in the numerator what we have as Euclidean norm of y and the denominator we have square root of n in fact this quantity has a special name and we used to call it uh, RMS value so RMS value of vector y so we can say standard deviation of x is RMS value of the d mean version of x this is uh, one uh, more interpretation of standard deviation of x so let's also talk about uh, some properties of standard deviation so among the properties of standard deviation so we can say uh, standard deviation of a vector plus scalar or b say you have the vector x that belongs to rn and you take another vector and a scalar say uh, alpha which is a real number so standard deviation of x plus alpha times 1 would be same as standard deviation of x so interpretation is if you add constant to the end to all entries of the vector it simply shifts the mean right so it, it won't change standard deviation so another property would be if you scale a vector so if you scale a vector by say alpha so standard deviation of scaled version would be given by alpha times standard deviation of x so this should be alpha absolute because uh, standard deviation is always positive non-negative in fact so, so this is a uh, standard deviation of a scaled version of vector and also gets scaled uh, by the same amount uh, by which we scale the vector right. So we can also note uh, the relationship between standard deviation, average value of vector and RMS value of vector. So we say, so relationship between standard deviation, average and RMS. So what we know is that, so RMS value of a vector square is given by average value of a vector square plus standard deviation x square um, in data science and machine learning um, at times uh, we see this expression that total error is given by that error is bias plus variance and this simply stems from uh, this relationship between RMS average and standard deviation. So total error is given by the mean error which is bias and standard deviation which we call variance. We'll talk about this in more detail. We have studied the concept of standard deviation. So let's use it to introduce the concept of standardization uh, which is very widely used in machine learning and data science. The overall idea is given a vector we want to apply some operations on vector to make it zero mean and unit standard deviation right. so say we have a vector x that belongs to rn so we define another vector y which is x minus average value of x so what is special about y Special about y is that this is d mean, that means simply means average value of y is equal to zero. Right. So we have applied some operation on x and we obtain y, and y is zero mean. Right. So let's also define another vector z, which is x minus average value of x, and you also divide by standard deviation of x following properties of standard deviation so we know that uh, average value of 
z would be equal to 0 and standard deviation of z is equal to 1. So we started with x and we obtained y by subtracting average value of x and dividing by standard deviation uh, of x to obtain z and z is uh, 0 mean and standard deviation of unity. Right. So let me also uh, explain here in some textbooks uh, this average value of x is and uh, denoted by this symbol mu and standard deviation is denoted by the value uh, by the symbol sigma and uh, using mu and sigma uh, we can say the operation the concept of standardization would be z is equal to x minus mu make it zero mean divided by sigma make it uh, uh, unity standard deviation right so so we have talked about uh, uh, distance angle standard deviation and i think we we'll stop here and we will continue in the next module thank you very much